Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Discobot tutorial. In this video, we're going to be setting up for the upcoming videos, which will be all about making RPG systems, but like in Discord, someone gave me the idea. I think it's pretty cool. We can have stuff like uh, currency and leveling and like challenging other people to duels. Now, obviously, there won't be any actual gameplay combat. It'll be more of like an automated um, like randomized numbers kind of thing, you know, we'll, we'll see what we're gonna do. We'll have items, inventories and stuff like that using a database, so that's gonna be pretty fun. But before that we're gonna create one more thing with the dialogue handler, we're gonna make the reaction steps I mentioned previously, so that we can have essentially different outcomes that can lead to other steps. But of course first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to JVK Makerspace, some Hobo 101, Average Morning, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yaris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. There are also links down below to the social media such as Twitch, Twitter and Discord as well as our website. If you could go and create a free account on there and sign up, that'd be greatly appreciated or following on any of the others, that would all be appreciated. Now let's get to the video. So in the last video we made this dialogue command and we had different steps and based on those steps we can make text steps or int steps that expect different kind of values. So for ints, you know, minimax value or text minimax character length. And then from there, we do the dialogue. Maybe when certain input is given, we do other things. So as you see here, um, if the input result is something interesting, we set the next step to be this step. Otherwise it's null, meaning ends. It's up to you, you can build the dialogue up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create another kind of step for reactions. So for example, you might ask the user something and you expect a yes or no result. The problem with actually asking them to type stuff in like a string is that you know maybe you want them to say yes in any way they want. So they might wanna say like yes or just the letter Y or yeah or you know, all these different ways of saying yes and same for no. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the bot react to its own message with like these two reactions, for example, like a thumbs up and a thumbs down. And then based on what the user reacts with, so the thumbs up or thumbs down, we go from there, okay? So we can say, if they do thumbs up, go to step B. And if they do thumbs down, go to step C. So we're gonna set that up now, let's get to it. So let's add a new class. We're gonna call this class the reaction step, like so. And it's quite similar to the others. So we're gonna make a public class reaction step. It's a dialogue step base. And then it has a private read-only dictionary. Okay, so this dictionary we're gonna have passed in in the constructor. Actually, let's do that as well. So public reaction step. Okay. We're gonna want a dictionary where the key is an emoji and then the value is um, a step to go to, okay? So we're gonna say, if they do this emoji, go to this step. And we can just do that, but the thing is we might want some more data as well as the step to go to. We might want to actually display to the person, you know, a little um, option like, so for example, we can say in our actual message in the embed that thumbs up means yes and thumbs down means no. Obviously they might assume that, but it's always better, you know, you might have other cases where it's not thumbs up and thumbs down. Maybe it's like just some random emojis. You wanna say this emoji means this or this emoji means this, okay? So that means we're gonna create another class. We're gonna have a public class in here called like reaction step data, okay? And this is gonna have the stuff in it that we um, want to display. Well, we're gonna want to know the public um, I dialogue step next step, okay? Like so. And we're also gonna want uh, some text, so we'll take a string and we'll call it uh, just content or whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. I might think of a better name for it later. Okay, and I'm just gonna put this above because I want to. Okay, and what this means is now we want to take in a dictionary of type uh, Discord emoji as the key, Discord emoji, like so. And then the value is reaction step data that we just made. Okay, and we can ju just call this uh, steps or something or um, options, okay. And we don't even have to set it because it's gonna come in in the constructor. So we, we want to take in a dictionary of these, like so, call it options. And we'll make this underscore options. So we can just say underscore options is equal to options, like so. Okay, uh, now the problem with the reaction step is, doo -doo -doo, we don't implement a function. Okay, and also this um, constructor is gonna need to also have some content to take in like we do um so we're gonna have to go string content comma dictionary of this and we can just say content into there okay so the next step for uh, this is completely based on whether um it's, it's not just one we store it's one from this dictionary okay 
So we're going to need to get the next step from the step data. So what we can do is we're going to need to store in a selected emoji, basically. Um, so let's say, um, where should we do it? Let's just do it below here. We'll say public uh, action of Discord emoji. Okay. On valid result, just like the other ones. Okay. Set. Okay. So it's just like if we go to the int step, we have it down here. And we'll initialize this. And now when we get the next step, we also, sorry, need to store the uh, selected emoji that I was on about. So we'll have a um, private discord emoji selected emoji. I'm going to go ahead and put that up here. Whoops, put that up here. And because we know what the selected emoji is, we can say the next step is options where we say the key is the selected emoji. Okay, oh, sorry, and then dot next step. So we say we want to get the one with the emoji that we've got selected and then get the next step from it. Obviously this isn't protecting against stuff being null, but obviously if something's null, it's because you've just forgot to set it or something. So then you can fix it there. It's up to you to add that kind of stuff. in if you want, I'm not going to waste time doing it here. And then finally, we can actually write the code for doing the step. So we're going to say, um, the cancel emoji is a uh, discord emoji dots from name. So every server has this because it's um, a, just a discord emoji. It's not like a custom server one and it's just X like this. So that's just the X emoji. And then we're going to say, well, let, let me actually copy this embed stuff because we don't need to, uh, I don't need to sit here and do all this. I'll explain it though. So we've got the embed. We don't need the footer. Please react to this embed person content. To stop the dialog, react with the, and then by typing this, it'll actually put the uh, cancel emoji inside here. Now we want to get interactivity. So we need to import interactivity. And we're gonna say while true. Okay, while true, we'll, we'll uh, say var embed is equal to await embed builder dot send message async. Wait, sorry, um, not this, channel dot send message async. So we're gonna send the embed builder as the embed. So embed builder, configure away false. Give it a second. Uh, we need to make this a public async, no, public override async. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. <clears throat> so now we've got this embed message. We're gonna say on message add because this message has been sent. We'll send put the embed in there. Then we want to say for all the reactions, right? So for, for each var emoji in options uh, in like underscore options dot keys because the keys are the emojis. We want to say um, await embed dot react async or create reaction async emoji so we'll pass in the emoji so now we're going to say for example if they pass in the thumbs up and the thumbs down we'll react thumbs up and thumbs down and then at the end we're just going to always say embed dot create reaction cancel emoji because after all the emojis you want we're going to have a cancel one which is how they then cancel the embed okay so we're going to say uh, var reaction result. So the result is equal to uh, interactivity dot wait for reaction async. What we're going to wait for, we're going to wait for um, where the options dot contains key x dot emoji. So basically this uh, stops people reacting with emojis that you don't want. So let's say you're expecting a thumbs up and a thumbs down and then they go ahead and react with some of a random emoji. It won't, you know, trigger this. This will only happen if the emoji they react with is in this uh, dictionary of keys or the keys of the dictionary. Um, so, or where x dot emoji, whoops. Um, what have I done wrong? One second, let me just type this out. 
or if it's the cancel emoji. And then what else do we want in here? We want to say it's for this embed, for this user. And then I've, uh, don't need to put that there. Dot con figure, oh wait, false. Um, okay, I've just done something wrong here. So where options dot contains key, emoji, or, ah, there's an extra bracket there. My bad. Okay. So now, once um, they react with either something from the dictionary or the cancel emoji, then what we want is we want to say, well, if the reaction result dot emoji, uh, dot result dot emoji is equal to the cancel emoji, then return true. Because remember, we return true if we want to cancel. We return false if we don't. We're going to set the selected emoji to be the reaction result dot result dot emoji. So now we, we know which one they selected, if it's valid. And then we can say on valid result, selected emoji. And then return false. Because false is that everything went well. Okay. And that's it. So now we actually want to go use this. So what's going to happen, the flow is, we make a new reaction step and we pass in the dictionary of emojis and where we go from there and then the, the data. Now we're not actually, one thing I forgot to do, but I'm going to do it after we've proved this works, is the letting the people know, you know, which emojis they can react with. Well, we, no, we're already going to let them know anyway, because they're there as a reaction, but we also want to explain what each one means, you know, let them know what uh, each reaction does. So let's create another command. So I'm just going to skip ahead and create a uh, command for this. Okay, so I've just made the base kind of stuff. We get their user channel because we want to do this dialog in DMs. We pass that in, the client, the other stuff. All we need to pass in now is the starting step. And then I've got the input dialog handle in and what we do afterwards, right? Um, so what we're going to say is we're going to say var reaction step or var, well, let's, let's, let's say var emoji step is equal to a new. We could have called it reaction step, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, want to take in the content. So we're just going to say like yes or no. And here are the options, right? So the options, we're going to just make a new dictionary here. So we can say new dictionary of this. And I don't like this being too long. So let's cut that out and import system collections generic. Okay, there's the new dictionary. And then if you open up squiggly brace, braces like this, we can actually just start doing it here. So, so over here, we've got thumbs up and thumbs down. So it's just uh, thumbs up like this. Okay, so if I copy this, we want to say, well, the emoji is uh, di whoops, discord emoji dot from name, thumbs up, like so. Okay, so that's the emoji. And then the actual value um, is reaction step data. So we want a new reaction step data where we say the content is equal to um, like this means yes. Obviously, it's very obvious. It's just for the for the example. Um, sorry, there's no argument given that correct. Oh, we have to pass in the client. Yeah, context dot client. <clears throat> so we say this means yes, comma. Next step equals null for now. Okay, and then if we want to have another one, another option, we just do comma next thumbs down. This means no. Okay. So what that means is we've got our emoji step. We can pass it in as our starting step. Now, nothing happens after we've done this emoji step, but let's just see what happens right now. Like, let's test it, okay? Let's go run it. Okay, so I made the command called emoji dialog. So let's run it, emoji dialog. I've already tested this, I know it works. So we've got here, please react to this embed, yes or no. So this is yes, no, cancel. So I'll say yes, nothing happens, it's done now. Okay, you can't, like, it doesn't matter if you react to anything else, nothing happens. Um, but we actually wanna do something maybe based on that result. So in our case, based on the result, we want to go to a different step. So we need to actually make the two different steps you go to, all right? So we can say var yes step, just for the sake of testing, equals a new, um, we'll go text step. And we'll say the content is you chose yes. Okay. And then the next step is null. And that's it. And we'll just make a no step. No step. You chose no. 
Okay, so we got these two different steps, and all we're going to say over here is, this means yes, if they choose the step, go to the yes step, and if they choose this one, go to the no step. In the future videos, when we're actually working on the RPG thing, we'll have some actual, you know, practical uses of this. Right now, it's just um, an example. So, obviously, based on this, we get two different steps, and we know they're different steps because they're different. They'll say different stuff in here, and we can even just say something completely different, right, to prove they're different. Like, we can make this one an int step, and just say, um, well, it's an int step, so we'll know it's an int step when we uh, do it. It'll want an integer input. Okay, let's give it a go. So, if we run it now, we go over to Discord. We go back to the server, so here, and we do question mark emoji dialogue. We get a DM, we go to DMs, yes or no, we'll say no. You chose no, and then I can do whatever. So remember, no is a number, so if I say hi, it's not an integer. If I say 20, then it's happy and it's done, okay? But then if I go back and I say emoji dialogue, and then I go here, and then I say thumbs up, you chose yes, let's put in, um, you know, a number again. But this time it's fine, this one's an int a string input. I should have actually just put in a string to prove that, but um, it's fine. I'm sure you guys see, it's, it's clear, it's you chose yes, which is the string here. So, now we can actually use this in our RPG thing. We might ask some questions like, you know, select this, this, or this, and then we can give them three options. We can even make this dynamic, we can make this dictionary dynamic. We've made it static for the example, but you can get a bit more interesting than that. So I hope you see the use in this. If you've got any questions about it, feel free to ask down below. Give me ideas of what to do videos on, though I have some videos uh, ideas already for the next few, but I can still you know, write them down and keep them planned for the future. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and goodbye.